years. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi, everybody. Chapman Wave uh, notations here. Uh, courtesy of Basil Chapman. I had a question about that. Yeah, all the notations you see, every single line, every single uh, notation of the letters in the Chapman Wave is what I've added to the charts. Uh, it's relatively easy as you're doing it. Uh, it just adds up over a period of time. And what we are looking at here is there must have been 10 o'clock news that the market didn't like because the Dow was up 168, and now it's only up 97, and the S&P has gone negative. So we'll run the numbers, and a couple of the things that we're looking at right now on this uh, Tuesday, the 5th of April. It doesn't feel like we're like halfway into April already. Yep, we are, actually. So what we're looking at is this pattern that we're looking at with three green candles today is a green candle so far. We're not even an hour, we're 40 minutes into the trading day. So the day is really young. And what we really want to see is how is um, how will the relationship of the QQQs, which led the market up sharply yesterday, be today? And can that, uh, six, that really successful uh, pattern that we saw yesterday going into a sharp up close and the Qs be maintained. Let's go. The Dow is up now only 46. The S&P, which was up for a moment, is now down. It's at 45.71, down 11. Uh, this is a, an important session because the QQQ, which had a fabulous session yesterday, it's given back half of the gain of the actual from the opening to the close. It is down 4.26 at 364.96. We're looking at that pattern having resistance. This Chapman wave, this little flag right here. I call it the falling axe formation. Could not break above it. That's going to be really important. IWM, the Russell 2000 down sharply, down dollar 86 at 206.04. Let's see if gold's starting to move higher on some kind of news out there. No, it's up nine. I, I'm a little behind, so maybe it is actually moving um, sharply higher. But at 1943, it's holding within that pattern I said is a rectangle formation, and the and prices can stay in that range for longer than your patience. And here we are. Gold needs to get to the 19. Oh, I can't just go s slightly above that high of the 24th of March continuous contract 1972 if gold starts to trade in the 1978 1980s that's a breakout that we have to consider as really important that's number one number two is key support is in the 1930 i no, i say 1928 to 1922 in this in this rectangle formation silver is uh, trading up 38 cents at 24.98 it's starting to build a better base than gold, in a sense, but the chart formation still is uh, its not as good. But if it's suddenly, remember the rotation that we see through the market is also the rotation we see through um, gold and silver as one place catch up to the other. So we'll see what happens here. But if it starts to trade, not just go above, but if it starts to trade at 2500, if it starts to trade in the 25. 53 area anytime this week that's starting to really improve the chart of silver we're looking at high grade copper high grade copper is making a leg d within a, a lower construct of that peak e that was made in the chapman wave over here at on the 7th of march at 460 at 589 no sorry 583 and it plummeted down to the four just about 450, ran up to the most recent high, which was today at 486 in leg D, and it's starting to show a little bit of weakness because the stochastic never got over 80%. So I'm watching this very closely, and nothing seriously wrong. It just means that it's not breaking out to a new recovery high as it should in a leg D. All right, we're also looking at uh, crude oil here. <laughs> crude oil is finally pulling back a little bit, only up 12 cents at 103.29, stuck in this range. I'd say on the shorter term, 109 to 111 is very strong resistance. And the support that must hold is at 95 to 96. That's eight points lower. 
But I'm just saying that that's the area that I'd be looking at crude oil and say, whoops, what happened here? Next thing we're looking at is within the context of uh, we want to go to just real quickly. Someone asked about the VIX index. Yeah, VIX index, VIX index is up $1.11 at 1964. This base that it's been making in the lower 19s says if at any time this week there is a rally in the volatility index towards the 2170 to 2230 or 2250 area, that would be quite significant, especially if you're looking at triple digit down day in the Dow and a sharp minus 40 or so in the S&P. Then you've got to turn around and say, uh-oh, now we're bumping to that resistance. And this rotation, which was starting to go into the NASDAQ-type stocks, finally hit a speed bump, and we're going to have to watch that really, really closely. Let's look at the TLT. Uh, TLT is bonds down almost two points at 129.55. I haven't looked at this chart um, I, well, we, I showed it to subscribers to my opening call, but let's do that today because I want to see where we are starting the new week. Let's go to the chart that says here it is. So what we're looking at is the white uh, nine uh, white TYX, which is the 30-year T bond yield, the brown TNX, which is the 10-year T note yield, and the cyan. Oh, I can't believe what I'm seeing. The cyan colored five-year has just spiraled above the yield. This is the yield, folks. Has spiraled above. <laughs> Before I even talk about it, let me just double check here. What we're looking at is the high was in the 30 year 2.644 2 or 26.44, as it's written here. The yield at this point in the TYX is 25.60, about a point lower. But the CYX, the five-year, is above the 30-year and the 10-year. I, I don't recall seeing that going back, going back and back and back and back. Oh, right there. Nope. The high that was made June of 2007 had the usual sequence where the 30-year was above the the. 14, sorry, above the 10 year, and the 10 year was above the five. And that was back, uh, that was the week of June the 8th of 2007, and the high of the yield uh, at that time with the, five, with the 30 year was 52, 52.33, so 5.23. All right, and here we are at 2.5. So there's a huge difference, but that's not the point. The point is the five just jumped above both the, the 10 and the 30 year. Wow. Um, yeah, you can see why the market's down. Dow's down 14, S&P's down 17. Uh, I'm not sure what the news was at 10 a.m. Uh, usually, let me see, somebody might have said it. Uh, let me just double check. No. All right, so um, as Duffy says, uh, TBT liftoff. Let's see the TBT, which is the inverse of the TLT, and that is trading right now uh, at 21.28, up 60 cents. Well, it hasn't broken out. It needs to get to about 21.97, and it's 21.27. But it is a little bit of a a little bit of a market scare for sure. I'll be back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. I had a quick question. I think it was a quick question. I don't know if you noticed Teva. This is Teva Pharmaceuticals. Huge move from the uh, 7, what was that, 728 or something? 724 level on the 14th of March, trading right now at 10.06, having hit 10.42. Yes, spectacular. And what I did uh, for subscribers, some opening call on um, f uh, Saturday in my overview uh, video. I discussed that the IBBs, just for the first time, started to show some signs, uh, I think this is in the IBB, the NASDAQ Biotech ETF, some signs of a recovery, but the actual weekly chart is still terrible and the monthly chart is horrible. So I think it's this is the same situation that we're looking at all, all across the board, and that is there are some sectors that are doing okay some doing well and a lot that are not doing very well. But within those sectors, there are some stocks that are actually performing much better than the others. And in this case, here's an example. Teva Pharmaceuticals, single digit stock that just went to double digits. And uh, that's a great example, but this is specific. So uh, Teva, 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 Teva Pharmaceutical, Industrial ADR, I think that's in industries, maybe that's what it's called. Monthly chart looks terrible. Weekly chart's really improving. Um, and the daily chart is fabulous, gone to a leg C. They could have been in um, Chapman Wave at, at 8.21 on the 23rd and a high of 8.0. Oh, yeah, 8.21 for two days. That's a parallel high. If I, Did I get that right there? Oh, yes, I did. Whenever there's a wiggle in the unbalanced volume or the relative strength, and that's, a, a, um, I would call that a phantom peak. Just for now, I'm going to call that a phantom peak right here at A. And I want to be ahead of the game. And that's just saying, you don't have to, if, if you are long, you don't have to do anything just yet. But consider that there's a chance. It's acting like it, it is a very short term peak D. And a leg D, and it could become a peak D, and just have a digestive phase. So I like to do that. It's one of the uh, the uh, moderations, the alterations, and changes that I can make in the Chapman methodology, as long as it's uh, based on some criteria 
that, that repeats over and over and over again. In this particular case, I'm calling that a phantom peak, A, but the, everything about it, the technicals, everything is fab, just superb in the daily. But the on-balance volume says, be careful, it's a little bit overbought. And this leg that I'm calling D, even though technically, technically it should be a C, I'm calling it a D, and there could be a, a pullback back into this candle here in the 9... 90, 980 area, and then we'll see what happens. But good, thank you for pointing that out. I'm going to make a note just to keep an eye on this Teva Pharmaceuticals. I believe that that's the name of it, Teva Pharma. Okay, next thing is what happened in that uh, 10 o'clock thing? Well, evidently, one of the Fed, let me see who said it. Um, yeah, thank you, Jack. Uh, Lail uh, Brainard, FOMC, just now. I expect the balance sheet to shrink considerably more rapidly than in the previous recovery, with significantly larger caps and a much shorter period to phase in the maximum caps compared with 2017-2019. The reduction in the balance sheet will contribute to monetary policy tightening over and above the expected increases in the policy rate reflected in market pricing. Dow's down 73, S&P's now down 26, and the QQQ, let's just check what that is, because it acted so superbly yesterday, is down five, giving back a huge chunk of yesterday's gain. So we we had a, a fantastic move because we went long um, at the before the opening yesterday, the three times long, and we've taken some profit off, and I'll have to check to see whether or not we actually stopped out. I think let me just see. Uh, let me double check here. I need to talk about this is for clarity. Okay. And okay, so we are out. Uh, maybe we're not. Uh, let me just have a, have a look. So the GQ, I, I hope we can, I hope at last that we can stay in because I still see the technicals are still very strong. I think we actually might have just been stopped out by two pennies. Yeah, so we got a gain. Um, not as fantastic as it was at the at the close yesterday because this TQQ Q, um, went from a low yesterday of 58.23 to a high of 61.35. That is a whopping move. And today, look what it's done. Oh, what a pity, Mr. Brainard. Thank you very much. It's a pity because uh, the Qs were so oversold, that the NDX 100, many stocks have been so oversold that they deserve to have, let me just go to SQ, which is not square anymore. It's called block. Yeah, you see, gave back all those gains at a peak D. So many of these uh, different issues had ADBE. I don't think so. Adobe is at a peak B and is struggling. Adobe Cloud Digital, that whole cloud sector, CRM, it's just struggling. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. The peak C1, C2, little double top, having gone from 311 down to 184. Salesforce.com. I just this is speaking to a, a larger issue. If the cloud uh, area is having so many problems, let's have to have a look at CrowdStrike because this takes us to the uh, cybersecurity. CrowdStrike down four and a half at 224, made a high three days ago. Uh, look at this beautiful left side, right side price time match. Look, I chose a high that was made back in. November the 29th, uh, that was 235.69, and then it came down and I chose the low, This doesn't usually work this way, but when it does, that's great. I chose a low of 150.02 on the 24th of January as the fulcrum, the, the plumb line for the same number of bars to move to the right, and um, it went, it didn't get there, and it took a little longer to actually get close to that level, and it went to a high of 232.86. This is one of the techniques that I'll be discussing in my uh, webinar coming up a week from tomorrow. What te techniques we'll be looking at in 2022 that can help us uh, survive the volatility that I'm anticipating? And is there a chance that we will get to a new all-time high 
in the down the S and P in the key indices. Uh, that's going to be a big question. So, um, and I'll be uh, I'll be doing a lot of work for that and talking about the sectors that have worked well. Look at this. Talking about sectors, look at the SLX, which is the Van Eck Vector Steel ETF. Why on earth would it be close to um, a yearly high? 68.22 was the May high of last year, and this year it's gone to 69.80. So what I've spoken about for about a year and a half now is a pattern that's been reflected in so many stocks and indices where the price goes towards the previous major high, and that was the previous high, and yeah, 69.80. And then, makes this cup formation starts to pull back. But at this point, I'm still pulling it a big C in the weekly chart, and it should get to a D. Crowds, uh, this is the SLX, the steel sector. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, so let's just go back to that chart that we were looking at. Yeah, that is my uh, triple yield chart, my weekly triple yield chart. And that is unbelievable to see the five year way above the 30. Uh, could be temporary, but the fact is it is right now and it is impacting the market. And look, here is the Wood, WOOD, W -O -D, the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF, stuck in a range. Remember, rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. Sometimes it can pop out above, but if it does that, there's a chance it's going to try to test the bottom, and it did. It went below, went back again to the top, and now it's in the middle at uh, 89.38 down just uh, four 
uh, pennies. But look what happened to the HGX, the Philadelphia Housing Index, that is pulling back underneath that rectangle. And we have already gone to visit that rectangle uh, to say goodbye to the friends as it comes back down. If it closes decisively under the low of the week of the 25th of February, there's a weekly chart of, uh, if I can read it, 405.22. Is it 407.13 right now, down almost to 8? Um, that's going to be a big deal. And that says there's a chance that it won't go back very soon to that uh, level. Let's call it the 438 level. All right, let's get out of that because I don't want to have too many charts up. It's enough as it is. Uh, here we go. Okay, a couple of questions that I want to get to right away. I don't want to take too much time uh, by, and forget about them. Hack is the prime cyber security ETF security stocks uh, trading at 59.12, down 55 cents. And made a, let me just double check, 59.80 uh, yesterday and 59.83. So yes, it's in a leg D. It could turn out to be a Chapman Wave 2 bar a reversal. But so far, the MACD is strong. Stochastic is good at 89, very good at 89%. On balance volume daily is good. Relative strength is okay in the 60% area. Um, and the 9 is way above the 14 but the line is tackling the 200 period experiential moving average right now. So that just says, I'm going to do this. Let's see what happens in, in what's today, Tuesday. Let's see what happens Friday. I'm just going to put this in here to say there's a chance that we're making either a topping formation as this arch is over, or there's going to be fine. You'll find some support. And then the one quick pop to the 60.20 or higher area. And then we'll see what happens after that. Weekly chart is improving a lot. The MACD finally turned up. The stochastic is lagging at 63. On balance volume is suggesting it's a little bit overbought. But it had a 69.97 uh, high on the 11th of November, the week of, the, of 2021. And that's the week of uh, November the 11th. Pulls back to the uh, 50 area, and now it's at 59. It's good action, not great action. So hack is something that we've been looking at, <coughs> waiting for the next sharp decline to start to consider. But I, I'm just so surprised that Prime Cyber Security, HACK, it just it should be at all-time highs with everything that's going on in the world and the whole aspect of security. It's... Uh, Something's going on because it's only select stocks like PANW, which is PANW, Palo Alto Networks, trading almost at its all-time high. But many of the others are not doing anywhere close to as good as this. Palo Alto Networks, cybersecurity, trading at 622, down uh, almost six points. Uh, let's see, PANW is, that's a peak C. There should be one more pop to a leg D just above the high of 635.89 and it's trading at 622. So that's what I, that question came up there. Oh, a question came up, wait until the TBT really starts to break out. Well, I think it will break out uh, based on the weekly chart and I have it in April. There's a chance, maybe, uh, let's see, what is that? Is that May? Yeah. Maybe the second week of May, but the target on the upside for the TBT, which is the ultra short Lehman 20 year Treasury bond fund, the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line, I would say that in the next week or so, there's a chance it can get to 22.60, the high of the week of the 16th of March at a peak D. So that's really important to me. The worry that I've had for some time. And today's action makes me a little bit more concerned, uh, even though we are still long the Dow um, from the just under 33,000 and right now it's trading at 34,800. One of the things that really bothers me is that I don't like to go against history. And the history of the market vector semiconductor ETF, the SMH, has been for, let me just open this up. There we go. Forever. I mean, let's just even go back to 2008, the, the November low of 12.95, where it went to a low before the um, March 2009 Dow and S&P low. 
<clears throat> and it does that semiconductors over the decades. I think it was uh, 2002 and three, where it made a low before the market made a low six months later. It had already started the low, and sometimes it's later, sometimes it's earlier. But the fact that it's been fading so miserably, and it is, you know, I think of the semiconductors as the oil, just as oil was in the whole of the 1900s, the 20, 20th century. It was the, the generator of economic growth throughout the world. Yes, you can start talking about uh, gr growth as well as uh, pollution. I'm talking about the economy in terms of uh, what the benefits were. Uh, you could heat, uh, heating everything. It was just really important. So the fact that the semis, which I consider now to be basically the equivalent of the oil sector of the 1900s, is starting to fail here, does concern me. And that says we could get a rotation that says there's there's a, a situation that's unfolded that happens once every 100 years, or it's happened twice now in 100 years, 19, 1918, 1919, the flu epidemic, and 2020 through 2022. And as a result, areas that were um, really important to the economy were affected in a different way to what you would expect in normal economic circumstances, where there's this sector or one or two sectors that have this incredible surge of interest that filters right to the lowest levels of the general public. What I mean by the lowest levels, I mean people who have never looked at housing or the stock market or dot com or whatever it was ever before. And if any of you were around for the uh, dot com bust of 2000, 1998 was one thing, but the end of 1999 to the beginning of, 19, uh, of 2000, there were, I mean, I, I remember talking about this to, to people all the time saying, wait a minute, you've now got, the expression used to be that um, grandmothers would be buying bond, the safety of bonds. And all of a sudden you've got the grandmothers taking their safety of bonds and asking their grandchildren, what should I buy in the dot com? What is a dot com? Well, what do I do? How do I buy it? And they were buying. Just as many people at the, what was it, December of 20, I'll have to just check quickly, uh, BTC, were buying Bitcoin December of uh, 2000, yeah, 2020. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I've got a question about the ITA, which is the uh, iShares U.S. Aerospace and Defense ETF. I've got this at a peak C in the daily chart, a little doji candle, pulling back a little bit. And I've got the, a leg D going to a peak D in the weekly chart and a monthly leg D. But you know my rule of, the, of this is what I'm going to discuss in my webinar. And don't forget, you join up for those of you who are say, uh, subscribers to my opening call or you're interested in, in coming to this webinar because you'll be able from this webinar, you'll be able to go to all of my other webinars on my different techniques and you can go through them as many times as you want. you got 30 days uh, to uh, see whether or not you like my work with my daily call, etc. And then you can, if you don't like it, you can just uh, X out of it. Um, and But most importantly, try to get to Discord as soon as you can because that's the medium that you're going to use. It's really a simple technique to, to get there and then to be able to uh, go through it. We'll start at 4 o'clock and go to 5.30 on Wednesday the 13th. Probably start a little later. Some of you might have a little difficult. We'll have people organizing it so that you have a very comfortable experience. And it is archived in any case. Uh, but so go to Discord, and that's going to be very important. Most, mostly what I wanted to mention is in the um, ITA, that rectangle, the law, you remember I have a rule between the narrow rectangle where the price, of the, if it, it's a, more at the high of a, of a price movement and goes sideways for an extended period of time. It could be a one minute to 10 minute chart. It could be a, a yearly, it could be a weekly, anything. Once it breaks to the upside, you've got to be careful because if it comes back in, let me just show you examples now and then I'll get back to the ITA. Look, here's the IWM. We've been following this for those of you who've been listening to me. just. For a year, we've been talking about this narrow range between the 234 level and 207, and it just went on and on from about May of last year. Narrow, and then finally went to a peak D at 244.46. And I said, just got to be careful because the rule of thumb with my narrow rectangle formation is that if it breaks to the upside, it's, there's a chance it's going to come back. If it breaks the halfway point of the rectangle, there's a chance it's going to test the lower one, and often you get a price movement below, and then that one below tries to get back in to to sort of say goodbye to the to the crowd in the 207 to 203 four area, 234 area, and then it starts moving back down again. You've got to be real careful. So we saw that in the IWM. So let's go back, and then you've got the very large rectangle, and the large rectangle is like this, where the rule of thumb is. There we go. I grab the outer levels. You don't have to have the techniques that I've got here. You can just use parallel lines. You don't need a rectangle. I go to the bottom and I draw this in and I say, OK. Now, I remember I must have lost my notation on this one at some point when it shut down accidentally. Um, but the high that was made at about 120 it was actually 120.31 in the ITA back in February a year ago, two years ago, February of 2020, and then that whopping decline uh, cut in half, more than half. It goes to 56.23 a month later, uh, March. And then what does it do? It starts to make higher highs and higher lows. And the rule of thumb is 
it can do it in the same time frame. But in a shorter time frame, there's a chance that it's going to go to peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, if it holds the low that was made of that big flag, that, that big pole that was the d decline, and starts to make higher lows and higher highs. But it can do that in the same time frame, and the target then would be to get just under, just on, or just above the, the, that all-time left side major high, in this case that was the high of uh, February of 2020, and we've already gone to the 113. So we're seven points away, and I'm suggesting you to, to you that the ITA, which has Raytheon, let me just go through some of these now, I've got these other ones all notated very nicely. Let's go RTX, which is Raytheon, Raytheon, which uh, was a combination of UTX and Raytheon, um, it's made a PG, a flagpole, same situation, and then it worked its way higher in a shorter time frame. Let's see what it did in the 120-minute chart before we start pulling back. Yep, it went peak A, peak B, peak C, and there's your peak D. That's the Chapman Wave methodology. Did I know that was happening? No, I just picked it up right now. And for those of you in disbelief, there we are, peak A. Next highest peak is peak B. Next highest peak is peak C. And there's your peak D. And it went underneath the previous high and then pulled back. And that's the 120-minute chart. So Raytheon is holding well. And the shorter term is kind of digesting these big gains. It is at a peak D in the weekly chart and a leg E in the monthly with a potential Chapman Wave Roman candle. We've got to watch that at a high, all-time high. You've got LMT, which is Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin went to a peak D at about 480. What was it exactly? Was it, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. But that's good, because that's what I need. Um, 479.99. How can you miss a round number? Well, you can miss it by a penny. And that's exactly what it did. Uh, was there a round number anywhere surrounding it, left side, right side? No round number there. Yep, 463 was the low. The day that it made the high on the 7th was 463. And what I usually type in here, uh, all-time high at 4799 uh, with a round number low of 466.463. And that says, if this, if Lockheed Martin at any point can close for two out of three sessions above that round number 463, that says there's a really good chance it's going to go towards the previous high, and that would be right at about 480. And as a peak D in the weekly chart, I'm going to draw in what I normally do, and that is just a rectangle formation right there in the weekly chart. And I've called this a leg B in the monthly chart. Wow, Lockheed Martin Corporation Security and Aerospace Research, Design, Development, Manufacturer, tech, Technical Systems, Identifier, Fire Potential. Hmm, how about that? What's the other one? No, NOC, NOC is North, North Rup, Grumman. Same thing, peak E, big move up on, I think it was March the 7th. Uh, pulls back sharply, it's got a peak A, peak B, and it's in leg C right now. Underneath the previous high, I suspect, at least for the shorter term, we could be looking at something like this. But it is making higher highs and higher lows. So this is called Northwood Grumman NOC, trading up 6.92 at 4.59 right now. We're looking at peak A. It's a great peak A. I don't know if I have time to make that. I call it a great peak A, a great peak B. But once you get to a C, You've got to watch because if the MACD crosses positive, which it hasn't, and the stochastic gets over 80%, which it has, there's a chance that it could actually go to a leg D. So I haven't yet, I'll, I'll have to make a decision tonight whether to call this an up arrow with blue ABC, meaning it's in a buy mode. I just don't know yet. Now, my suspicion is from everything I'm looking at, I don't know yet, but we'll know the day is young, is that we are in a situation that says news-related sell-offs, if there's a reversion over the period of the rest of the day with higher highs coming into the afternoon session, what I'd say to subscribers, if we are better than a minus 30 in the early afternoon and holding in the Dow, that's going to be good. And that says by Wednesday or Thursday, 
higher highs to come. We'll see. So, uh, uh, we've got full food growing at 58 holding well. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So what we're looking at here on the short term is yes, that was just a bull on wanting to get us out of a position or two. But in fact, what we've done is moved up to the 200 feet moving average in the one minute E mini chart after hitting a low of 45, what was that, 45, uh, right there, uh, 47.58. So let me just go through this again. A week from tomorrow, I'm going to be doing my webinar. It's really, a, to me, it's really an important webinar. It's, it's one that we're all in this together. We have to be looking at all sorts of things. I want information from the subscribers, to, and people can send me information that, I, that I've got a lot of um, the socioeconomic stuff that I'll be talking about, about skyscrapers, etc. as I'm coming back into the skyscraper world. These are the narrow, skinny ones. Uh, but And also these incredible buildings that we're starting to see that look like building blocks with the, uh, in Brooklyn, they've got a couple where the building is looks lopsided because you've got the squares, not straight up, but they get moved to the side. So um, that's going to be very important. What we are looking at here is I am, what am I worried about? I'm worried about the semiconductors not confirming rallies. I'm worried about the IAI, the broker dealer ETF, um, not doing as well as it should, including uh, Schwab, which is holding okay. But I want leadership in the broker dealer area to say, folks are buying stocks, etc. And uh, we also want to look at Hood which had a nice pop to the upside and it's given a huge chunk back. 
But that's what I'm looking at. What am I positive about in the rotation through the different areas? When you're looking like uh, looking at something like an ARKK, Kathy Woods ETF, they are so damaged to the downside. But even just a decent rally could help the general market as we rotate as some of the really big cap stocks that have not had their big pullbacks uh, start to consolidate. So I believe that this is so far, I feel very constructive. I haven't had any change in that aspect, but I have to monitor what are weak links, and that's the broke dealer area and uh, the semiconductors. But the rotation says there are a lot of things that you can find. That's the one for the next